If you're going to use this experimental system that I have shown in an earlier video and going to turn it into something awesome, I want to build a 3D printer out of this system, which I'm going to use for FDM resin printing because I need a custom system for that, but that's a whole different story. Before going all in on that, I want to gain a bit more experience and do some tests and make some fun stuff with it. The system consists out of roughly three parts. The segments, the rods, and the tensioning system. The tensioning together with these segments make this design stiff. And these rods, these are just standard PTFE tubes and they have a double function and can also act as guiding system if you use track rollers. Therefore these profiles are exposed and that comes in handy if you're going to build a 3D printer. And depending on the materials used, we can go cheap with this PLA and just these PTFE tubes. We can go high performance with this four millimeter carbon fiber tube and use better materials like polycarbonate, or nylon, or we can go fancy and use this brass tube. We can use different fibers besides Kevlar, but this is actually quite affordable. Most important thing is that it doesn't stretch and well, Kevlar is a quite good material for that. So let's quickly uh, put one together. I have looped the fiber through here and on both sides we have the same tensioning system. This can rotate within this body. This is just copper wire, a uh, solid core. By twisting it, the fiber effectively becomes shorter, tensioning this whole system. Once the tension is rising, we can start hearing a note. Is this thing on? Yes, okay. I have a filament box with uh, one opening here on the side. Place it on here. Place a microphone. And of course, when I increase the tension, also the note increases. And this corresponds to a certain tension within this system. But I have no idea how high this tension actually is. So therefore I made this. This is the... Um, tension pitch correlation testing rig and it has this um, force gauge which goes up to 300 kilos or 660 pounds safety goggles so right now we're at zero I think yep we're at zero so let's start uh, twisting That's the maximum of this fiber. But why are we using fibers in the first place and not just a rod down the center? Besides being an interesting thing to try, um, the initial goal is to turn this into a 3D printer that can print fast. Um, so things have to be light and stiff. Well, it didn't succeed in the initial try, oh, but I think that fibers could be an interesting solution. So imagine this, carbon fiber tubes and everything is tensioned with Kevlar. That's pretty cool, right? So I've put this under maximum tension until it filled. I think this is the maximum. Oh, there it is. This tensioner is getting pulled inside here and we didn't get a catastrophic failure, but we did get a result and I analyzed the audio, which it, it was challenging because we ha there were several notes, but I can say with some confidence that the maximum amount of tension within a profile like this is around 15 kilos. But most importantly is that we know the maximum pitch that we can apply to a profile like this. So during our build, I can just use a guitar tuner and tune it within a safe range. So things, well, stay intact.
And now we have two of these profiles for our desk lamp. And I must say that this combination of ebony, redwood and brass, I kind of dig this color scheme. And these gears, they are printed on the side because I got the best results this way. But I had to design my own support around the circumference, uh, which was pretty easy to remove and left this sharp edge. And these gears are not here for only aesthetic purposes. These will be our friction hinges. This will be our connector printed out of bamboo filled filament. So a third sort of wood type of filament. I can place this here. These brass threaded rods. I've cut them to length, put them in a drill and filed them down. I don't have a lathe, but this way I could also make them look pretty clean. Okay. And to tighten this, you have these beautiful brass thumb nuts. This is our friction hinge. So if I tighten these, then it runs smooth, but it stays into well, position. I think that these are some very interesting kinematics, but there is one issue. Right now I can put this into well, every angle I want and it stays in place. There will be a problem when we put some weight on the end, because it will just fall down and we can, we can prevent that by just tightening it even more. Then it would be almost impossible to move it in the other direction. What you usually see with friction arms, you need some sort of spring system to have some force into the other direction to balance it. And I have found these. These are um, regular tension springs. Remove the tension from it. All right. So now we have a, <laughs> a counter force making this thing want to go up. So right now it will just fling up unless we are really tightening this down. Um, but if we are going to put some weight on here with the lamp, then things should balance out. Yeah, hopefully that works. Before we find out if that actually works, we've got another interesting challenge. I'm currently printing the foot for our desk lamp and we have to add some weight to it, otherwise it will topple over. And I'm printing that on the Sovel SV07, which is the sponsor of this video. This printer has some interesting features, especially considering the price point. It has a high flow hot end, which goes up to 300 degrees, which is more than enough for most materials. And it uses a planetary gear direct drive extruder, which already has proven itself on the SV06. Extra cooling fan here at the back. If you want to print really fast, the filament runout sensor, dual Z axes with anti backlash nuts, or well, maybe the best of all, this thing runs on Clipper. Without going into too much detail, Clipper is a firmware that improves the performance of the 3D printer, but it also comes with a very nice interface, this rich touchscreen interface but it even has a nicer interface if you just connect the computer to it. I can watch the status, I can control the 3D printer, I can just send the G-code files to it. What I especially like about Clipper, and that is, that's very useful for this project, is that it supports macros, especially the pass one. I can click on it and it passes, but I can also just add pass in the actual G-code file and it passes at that point moves the head to the side. Especially for this project, that's a very useful feature. So if you want a feature-rich printer which just does its job and it does it well, then check the link in the description and you'll also support this channel. So now, uh, I have to wait for this, uh, this thing to... The print has passed at 69%. Nice. And we are going to fill it up with sand. I've bought this decorative sand from Amazon. Uh, this is gold. 
that's heavy. But you can basically use any sand as long as it's dry. My advice would be to use a transparent funnel so you can actually see what you're doing. And I have this glass funnel. Well, let's fill this thing up. So you probably have guessed by now that you shouldn't do this in an enclosed printer or with a printer that has lubricated rails. And now you see that I have put way too much sand in here. That's not a big problem. This doesn't work with gyroid infill. I've used this triangular infill. So it's, well, it's open uh, all the way to the bottom. Most of the plastic is exposed now. It's continuing now. Most important thing is that you disable the part and fan. I've done that manually. I should have done that in G-code, um, but I forgot. My first try, I forgot to disable the part and fan. And believe me, you don't want to. The part and fan is particularly useful when printing smaller parts to cool them down. But because this is well, pretty big, it doesn't matter much. But it, things are looking pretty good. So I will let this continue. I vacuumed away all the excessive sand. And luckily this design had this sand overflow feature. The nice thing about 3D printed wood is that it melts, so I can melt inserts in it. Some rubber feet for the primary fuel. I added the tension spring and the coupler and mounted that with those brass nuts. Now I can mount the arm to it. This hinging mechanism is so satisfying. Now, mount the lamp and the wiring. The electronics aren't too complicated, but they had to be very careful not to mess up the wire. I used the shrinking tube and ferrules to make it extra pro. I decided to use a connector so you can add a fitting cable afterwards. In my opinion, this should be the standard. I mounted the control panel and connected it to do the first test. seems to be working. I clicked in the glass front and there's no way back now. In the back you see the names of the top tier Patreon supporters. The names are hidden behind my backdrop and I'm working on a different solution. Yet, thanks guys for your support, it really helps a lot. This halogen light looks awesome with this warm light and the dimmer works perfectly. Funny thing I noticed is that the switch button stays slightly illuminated which I managed to capture on camera. This is a very satisfying way to control a desk lamp and it can be dimmed to the point where you can just see the filament of the lamp glowing a little. However, there is this one thing I forgot that makes this thing complete. I've bought these letter punches and I have these 3D printed holders and I'm lying on the floor, not because I wanted to, but because this is a concrete floor so I can really... Okay, I've waited for the sun to set a little, so I can really show this lamp. I think that this is the most beautiful thing that I've made so far.
but it doesn't come without its flaws. I also made this microphone holder and the weight of the microphone is just a bit too much. The tensioning system isn't sufficient enough. So before I'm going to turn this into a 3D printer, I have to optimize that tensioning system even more. 